Coming up, we learn what a banger is during our review of The Leaky Cauldron. Also, for Halloween Horror Nights fans, we talk about Jack the Clown's return for Halloween Horror Nights 25. All on that all of that and more coming up live from the Bob Varley studio. This is the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. This is episode 37 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan your perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, all you people out there in your land of computers or iPhones or or Microsoft Tablet. Zunes, according to Microsoft. Dustin's life. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I know he's a big fan of the Zune still. I am. Holding out hope. Uh, hey, everyone. We're uh, here for another one of these go-arounds that we call the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I, of course, am your host, Craig Williams. And I am joined along with some other fools in the room, including <laughs> Rhino Clavin. The biggest fool. The biggest fool of all, but that's fine. Uh, another fool. Well, not so much a fool. She's wise beyond her years. and uh, I'm pretty cute. And uh, Okay. Well, that's your, that's your opinion. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> She's no Taylor Swift. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> I, this That's is an inside joke. I didn't. Uh, I didn't mean that in a mean way. I'm I don't sorry. know what was worse: the fact that I <laughs> said my statement, or then you compared <laughs> to another person. But JL does not. not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey. Everyone. She's here with us. She yeah. doesn't think highly of Taylor Swift. That's why it was, it was a joke. <laughs> I wasn't being mean. I'm anyway. just kidding. I I love you both. Like I. Continuing. Yeah, yeah just, I'm just going, gonna move moving on. on. I'll, I'll come back to that uh, metaphor later. Uh, or simile, I guess it would yeah. be a simile. Uh, and then I'm back on the controls, as always. Producer, and I'm sure a lot more could be said about him, but Dustin West. You know, I just really like the size of the screen of the Zune. You can't beat that with a <laughs> stick, honestly. And so. you can share your Zune tunes with other Zune owners. That's right. Now, exactly. do you actually still have a Zune? No, I've actually given it to my friend... <laughs> God knows what he did to it. After I got my first iPod Classic, uh, I gave it away. But uh, okay. you, you really, you can't beat the... You, look, to be able to get videos downloaded downloaded to your uh, your device from the Zune software, it's amazing. The, the quality of those videos is outrageous. I know. I mean, 2008 is sure looking to be a good year right I now. Know. <laughs> I know. I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm especially loving the new Paramore album. Uh, you know, it's great. It's great for the Zune. I hear that Obama's got a chance for presidency. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> where did it go wrong? Yeah, it, it all just went wrong to somewhere. A screeching halt. Okay. But uh, thank you all for joining us. We, of course, are going to be doing uh, one of the best reviews of Leaky Cauldron I think is ever going to be out there. Uh, that's. A, definitely a high opinion on my point, but uh, we might be wrong. We'll see how it goes. Uh, our, only our second dining review for the show. It's been a while since the first one. Our our first episode back after a brief break, and uh, we we did the cowfish, which was that was, January. Still, that was a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, big favorites of ours. Well, good food, and then that was also a very good episode. If I do say so myself, it was. We came together and we did something. Yeah. Come together. It happens every. Once in a while. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, sometimes better than others, but <laughs> that one particularly stood out, probably because we still all liked each other at that point. <laughs> we're, we're getting on here. It where was early. Things are getting a little tense. It was early. But before we get into that, and I'm not even going to do any housekeeping or anything like that right <gasps> now, the big, Jesus, stop hitting the table. And I don't mean Jesus, <laughs> I mean Rhino. <laughs> stop hitting the table. <laughs> You're freaking ridiculous. Uh you have one job. No Don't table. hit the Not table. Not hit the table. No, scoot back. So me. every person that was just listening now no, and apologize. their ears popped, it's because you hit the table. So can I get on with the important news get of the day? Get on with it, Craig. Well, it's the important news of the day because we're recording this on, I guess, Tuesday it would be. And uh, it's going to be released on Thursday like normal. But uh, at about 11 o'clock a.m. today on Tuesday, 
a couple days ago now, whenever you're listening to this or watching it, uh, Halloween Horror Nights finally put out a, a huge announcement. I'm looking all around. It's crazy. Uh, so, for people who have been behind a box or a door <laughs> or a cupboard. Behind for all box. those you box hiders out there, <laughs> you, you might have missed out on this one. Get up from behind the old refrigerator box. <laughs> well, definitely not a window. You can see straight through a window. So anything with... Opaque and beyond. Yeah, anything that definitely you can't see through. If you were behind something where you can't see through and you just had... You lost track of the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 Horror Nights announced that legendary icon of the event, Jack the Clown... Otherwise known as Jack Schmidt. Oh God! I, I feel like we should have eerie music playing. Yeah. Right no, now. there's been there's been subliminal messages being pumped through. Oh! <laughs> oh. For those of you uh, Watching. watchers out there, enjoy yeah. this. For the listeners, you have no idea what's going on now. You're probably about to hit stop and delete, <laughs> and you'll you'll tune back into us next week. But yeah, so icon Jack Schmidt, Jack the Clown, is coming back for Halloween Horror Nights 25. Is his name Schmidt? Jack Schmidt. That is his That's disturbing. Obviously, God, yeah. I just hate looking at the pictures of him. He's so creepy. He's so creepy. Yeah. And uh, so for we're going to kind of go over a little bit about it. But I believe last week, maybe Thursday or Friday or Saturday, uh, the Horror Nights official Twitter uh, page, Twitter handle, announced that they would be making announcement on May nineteenth. That was today. Oh, I thought yes, it was it if is. they got to the 25,000. 25 for 25, wasn't it? No. I didn't know if that was just a separate They thing. said the announcement was coming on May 19th. And oh, then okay. later they went on to say, well, you know, if we could get 25,000 by Tuesday for this announcement, it would be even better. But people kind of took it as if we don't get 25,000, then they're not going to make this announcement. So then all of a sudden you've got all this support going out for Horror Nights. Which is actually amazing. Cool. They, they did reach their goal. Uh, so bravo to them for getting that many. We're only 24,000 away from our Diz Universal Twitter. There you go. From getting that same mark. So, uh, nice. so we're coming for you. Yeah, we're coming for you in at least uh, 6 to 12 years, I'm going to assume. I don't <laughs> okay. know how the Twitter market works. But the announcement comes uh, after a couple of days of, of building up suspension. Uh, there was some like Twitter... What's that? I'm sorry. It was a stupid joke. I didn't mean to derail you. Well, there's some clues and stuff that were kind of released over the weekend, too. Just with, I mean, like, popcorn buckets that were ripped apart with random words and phrases mixed all over. And after three pictures, people finally put together that there was a bit.ly link that ended up leading to the new page for Halloween Horror Nights. That was at, like, HalloweenHorrorNights.com slash... Orlando slash maniacs and that was just showing a blank long hallway and for those watching not the ones listening uh, Dustin if you could put up the picture of Jack standing in the hallway that was kind of the first glimpse people got of it but without Jack and then today they released a video of him actually coming down the hallway looking just scary as all get out and it definitely has set a tone now for what Halloween Horror Nights is going to be this year. I know. I'm so excited. Sorry. I just Go got on. really excited. Yeah, and I, as I've said before, I'm not a... <coughs> oh, you scared the germs right out of me. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I'm not huge in my knowledge of past Halloween Horror Nights, only from what I know from the years I've been there and reading back. So... Uh, one of the things I know is that he is a big deal. I mean, you can still see one of the Jack Schmidt uh, like characters inside the uh, the horror makeup show pre-show area. So he's a part of Universal on an everyday basis. But he is the oh, pretty much the icon of Halloween Horror Nights. Kind of changed the whole genre from what I understand. Before it was. You know, just random Halloween scariness stuff all around. But then whenever they started making an icon out of him, that's how they started doing it for other characters, too. And, you know, now we're coming up to 25 years of this. And it's it's going to be more epic than ever. Because also, with the launch of their new website today, we found out that there will, in fact, be nine houses. Which, mm-hmm. usually, there's eight. So, more than ever before. Which on our episode where we kind of talked about the house rumors, we did in fact talk about nine different ones. So 
maybe those other sites that kind of led us onto that were right. And we All talked on. about Jack being a rumor too to come back during that episode too, didn't we? Oh yeah, no, yeah, we, we definitely talked yet. about that. Yeah. Um, and then also we'll have five scare zones with more scare actors than ever before, according to Michael Aiello today on Twitter. Michael is the uh, the creative director of Universal Entertainment at Orlando, so he he would know best. And there will be two shows this year, so I'm guessing that it's going to be Bill and Ted returning, as always, along with maybe Rocky Horror again. It okay. would be nice if they would... Specify? I, I, I would like to see something different. Rocky Horror's been here now for the past two, three years, and it would be nice for another change. What did it? What was it? I just assumed that that had always been here. What What was it before that? Do uh, you know? Do you before remember? there was a freak show yeah. type thing. Oh, well, I like the idea of Rocky Horror, but but I mean, I understand like they do Rocky Horror at the movie theater outside at City Walk, so it's not like if it leaves Halloween Horror Nights, it's still going to be very present in the Universal area. It's it's completely different though. I do enjoy seeing it at Halloween Horror Nights. I always make it a a staple that I need to do it at least once the entire event. Mm. But I also like seeing new things over and over again, agree, and yeah. the show's just the same. It's it would be nice if that was like an every other year rotating type thing, or or they did it on the anniversary years of the movie or something like that. Because I thought that's why they had originally. I was thinking when I had heard about it, I was like, well, that makes sense. It's like the twenty five year anniversary, or I think it would have been thirty at this point. But um, it's an old movie. Nine I'll find that out in a second. A I was lot. in that, by the way. Too. I would think that you know, with that many houses, that's really kind of almost making it a necessity to either have a frequent fear pass or doing one of those special tours that gets you into everything in one night 30 years this year sorry 1975 yeah well it's that would be 40 years also i can't do that. yeah wow i wasn't gonna point it out but good job you're good uh you you pulled back from it so that's what's important uh <laughs> we do have extra nights this year we talked about that a couple months ago that they extended it to 30 days mm -hmm. instead of the normal 27 or 28. But I would even go a step further. Instead of buying an express pass on the night you're going or, you know, doing a VIP tour, it even might just be important to get... The frequent fear yeah. pass. Right. Did you already say that? I did say that. Yeah, that's, I that's was what not really listening just to you. Your conversation. I, I really apologize. <laughs> I'm not cute enough and you don't listen to me. This isn't going well. Okay. No. <laughs> Sounds like a fifth grade crush. Am I right? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Circle that maybe box. Do no. we have a All fun right. transition right now? <laughs> no? No. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, I apologize for not listening clearly enough. I've got a lot of stuff going in my head about what I'm actually going to say next. So. What are you going to say next? Uh, I was just going to say, going back around to the Jack thing, because it, for huge, huge, huge Horror Nights fans, this is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. For the average person, including basically us, we, we have no idea what to think. And then there's the people who do it just because it's an event in Orlando and they want to try something different. They probably won't give two craps about this, which, you know, that's their right. I'm very excited to get familiar with the character because he's also going to be a little different this year. Uh, Michael Aiello did say, For fans who know his tale, you'll notice he has escaped the shadow of Oddfellow completely. He has shed his old coat for something of his own design. His face is more weathered, more lived in. Jack has come onto his own into his own that makes more sense and he is eager to preside over the spectacle spectacle of it all especially if that spectacle is filled with screams blood and gore he most certainly wouldn't have it any other way yikes god i hate clowns <laughs> yeah that's, that's all right that's not a clown <laughs> what about this thing i i was gonna ask you earlier um the he had also tweeted become jack's maniacs yeah that's kind of the hashtag going on right now jack's maniacs just for people that are like into it or is this like a thing like or is this they want people to audition and that's what they call them or it's just like that's the halloween horror nights like people what do you mean audition well are they is that a call for characters or what do they call them Scare characters no. like, characters um so it's just like people that are excited about uh, you it. see hashtags Fans are this Jack. fun thing on <laughs> twitter facebook instagram that you can pull in all posts using a hashtag i thought that was the number that way sign. it's all collected it well back in the day it was the number sign now it's hashtag so halloween horror nights coming up quicker than we can expect still no uh, official stance on what the houses will be or anything but we've got an icon returning and i know i'm just 
Exciting Extremely times. excited. I'm going. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to be when we go to do, cover this, which I assume we will. Um, it's going to not be pretty. I'm so, so stoked. I just. I'm going to. I'm just. Yeah. I don't even know. I'm yep. already nervous. I'm sorry. In a good way. Fantastic. I was going to say something else too. And then he but interrupted you. Was it about and then you were interrupted. Me? I mean, it was a. Uh, Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm familiar. Now I already kind of said some of it too with Jack. He uh, this is his first time back since 2010. So five years has been a long, long while, and mm-hmm. now it's it's been a while. Feeling, it's been a while. I uh, love that nostalgia stuff. I so. like nostalgia too, okay. but that kind of has to do it for that announcement. Uh, great announcement, but. I, I mean, we didn't know that we were going to be talking about this today. Well, we nope. kind of knew, but we didn't really know if it was going to end up happening. But we did come here for a specific reason, uh, and that was to talk to you about the Leaky Cauldron. Yes, the Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron. Potentially know. only Leaky Cauldron, I think, really. Not with a the in front of it. But for those of you who don't know, Leaky Cauldron is a quick service restaurant inside Universal Studios Florida. To be a little bit more precise... It's inside Diagon Alley. Did you say diagonally? Di- Diagon Alley. <laughs> that was listen. Movie listen reference. to me. Sp- listen to me speak. That was a movie reference. Listen. If you had been in a chimney, you would have ended up in the bad area. Absolutely, that actually might happen. Uh, so, despite in Harry Potter lore, the entrance of the Leaky Cauldron being inside London, and you have to know the right door. Oh, I, I did not remember that. You didn't remember that? Yeah. No. So it's actually kind of built in. I didn't have a picture of it that will be in the show notes. I might be able to get one there before I put up the show notes and all that. But for the people who are watching right now and not listening, uh, that doesn't really help you either. So I digress. Uh, if you're in the <laughs> London area walking through, you'll actually notice the leaky cauldron sign hanging up because it's just like in the movies. Whenever you're looking that's not the sign. Oh, I, I was, specifically I was say, that's referencing the Diagon Alley one, but that's not the one I was referencing because I don't have a picture of that one to show anyone right now. But as you're walking through London, you'll see a sign hanging up that looks blank. And as you get closer to it and hit the right angle, all of a sudden you'll see leaky cauldron appear onto it oh that's really cool. i did i so. i haven't noticed that and i've been there like a million times so that's really yeah. cool and now with the way with the effect actually in the sun it's starting to fade it so you can see it from more angles than before like on opening mm-hmm. day you had to literally be standing in a specific place to see it well and that was it was, it was a neat effect and i hope they can kind Restore of refurb it. it yeah to its former glory so Normally, you'd enter Leaky Cauldron from London. That's not the case at Diagon Alley in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You have to enter from inside Diagon Alley itself, which isn't a problem. And uh, it's basically the first thing you see as soon as you walk into Diagon Alley on the left there. it's It looks like brick walls and stuff from the outside. You can't miss it because you'll have people standing out holding menus. And, well, there's also signs that say Leaky Cauldron. I was just going to say, it has a, it's written on it. It says the Leaky Cauldron, and it's a little archway. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's, it's not hard to find by any means. So, uh, of course, some things being said, you need to have theme park admission to even get in there. I don't know. Maybe that's being a little too generous with the descriptions we're giving about this place but uh yeah you do need to have a theme park admission to get in there and actually dine at this place so leaky cauldron what's it actually about well it's actually from the book series and the movie series of harry potter yes hence the reason that it's in diagonally yeah exactly it is how harry goes he you know leaky cauldron is there and it is a passageway into Diagon Alley. So everyone knows the the famous brick scene of Rubius Hagrid touching the bricks and opening up the passageway. You get to there through Leaky Cauldron, and it's got some shady folks in there. Oh, yeah. You got some. That's, I mean, where he, that's technically where Harry meets he who should not be named the first time without knowing. Yeah. Because he was riding backseat in somebody's turban. And you also... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you I don't want to spoil any anything for anybody who hasn't gotten there yet. But if you haven't, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> that was awesome on so many levels. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So, uh, before we get into the food and all that, Leaky Cauldron, 
what an impressive restaurant. Oh, yeah. Being I, inside there. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll, I'll say this part later, but yeah, go ahead. Well, it's just, I mean, it's broken up into a couple sections, but mainly the big thing is if you walk in through the exit and you first go in, it's just a giant dining hall, mm-hmm. uh, almost in a way like the Great Hall is in the Harry Potter series, oh. just having a nice big open way with giant vaulted cathedral ceilings and i mean it's just so impressive in there during the opening whenever they would talk about it that was the biggest thing they would bring up over and over again the scale of the restaurant it is just massive uh I'm in the opening day picture from the official Universal Twitter feed. They took a picture of me and my friends who were there for opening day, and I'm, I'm this guy. I'm, I'm there. It was a real good picture. If you, you hit the right, table sorry. one more time, <laughs> one more time. Anyway, it's very cool. It's very big. In yeah, send it to me, and I'll try to put it in the show notes okay. if I care. Uh, some places, it's really well lit. Other places, Not specifically so the side seating areas, it is just extremely dark. Uh, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. I, I guess I just see well in dark places. Like so, you have like night yeah, vision. Like, yeah, I mean, like it's, a crookshanks. You've got some windows in there to help brighten it up a little bit. I see well in dark places, so I never have that problem where it's oh, it's too dark to eat my food. But I could understand a million times over if you're eating on the side. Uh, seating areas of Leaky Cauldron, it could be really difficult. Yeah. So you'd want to request to sit there because one thing about Leaky Cauldron is you don't get to decide where you sit just because of... I mean, maybe it's slow times they do it, but anytime I've ever been there, as soon as you put your order in for your quick service food, then it's similar to Be Our Guest in that over at Disney, they think they basically set the trend is that they'll give you a a nice little themed device that lets everyone know where your table is. Uh, In the case of Leaky Cauldron, they'll give you a candlestick Mm -hmm. and you hand over your candlestick to the person that will walk you to the seating area. They give you your seat and then later on uh, your food will arrive nice, hot, and fresh as quickly as it can come out. Our food came out really fast when we did this review. Really, really fast. It did. Yeah. Uh, One of the most important things about Leaky Cauldron itself, though, is the theming inside already mentioned the scale the scope of it is incredible but the theming i mean first off they have the actual leaky cauldron yeah uh, there's nothing in it to prove that it leaks but there is a giant gash in the side of it similar to the liberty bell that would pretty much assume that it's going to leak it would suggest that it would leak <laughs> <laughs> uh and then just looking around there's other little bits and pieces all the all the pictures hanging up on the walls are you know, kind of the old-fashioned witch, witchy-looking. Yeah, I love those photos. Thing. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. It, it almost has they got that. Their, they, sorry, they've got that moving. Uh, don't forget the prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, the, um, they they have the serious black serious, moving almost called picture Uncle in there, serious, but, like it was a, but all the photos up above the seating areas. I love those because it's just it's so reminiscent to me of those kind of like old, creepy 1930s, 1940s Halloween. Uh, oh yeah totally advertisements with witches and stuff on it and they just even stuff is on hanging on the walls that has like writing from the owners of the leaky cauldron saying you you know what i always loved is like they have those little tucked away areas like i'm assuming like it's a cast member or team member only area but uh it'll it'll be like like at three broomsticks they had um why are yeah Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was on the wire. I thought there was something wrong. I'm sorry. Um, but, you, you know, like you could, um, if your back is to the leaky cauldron and you look to your right, there's like a set of stairs and then like there's a ledge and there's what up there that looks like like a bulletin board or something. And it's got papers and everything attached to it. But it just gives me that vibe that there's a whole nother cool area of this restaurant. Like mm-hmm. it keeps going. It's yeah. not like we're in just that one little place, oh, yeah. you know. I think one of the things that's really cool about it is, you know, diagonalities if fairly new place and yet the feel of this it, it feels like it's been there forever it it feels old like as it's supposed to it's kind of cool okay apparently no i i agree <laughs> no it, it's beautiful and it's a nice sister restaurant to three broomsticks yeah. over in hogsmeade uh, obviously they needed a restaurant to come into diagon alley to 
have that same that same level of service and quality of food and it, it had to be leaky cauldron because basically that's the that's the one recognizable thing mm. in terms of eating at Diagon Alley. So it, it's a perfect fit. And one of the things I like about it now getting into the food is leaky cauldron. Don't don't look at it the same way as three broomsticks if you've ever eaten at three broomsticks before. That is a lot of chicken, ribs, fish and chips. It's uh, not it's not like it's safe food it's it's night nice, like and i don't mean that in a bad way because because these two places are my favorite two places to eat in either park but it's it's just it's like safe it's like what you said it's the chicken it's the ribs it's get they've got the fish and chips but there's no like it, they wanted to make sure that people were still going to eat there i guess and not you're take saying too that many the, chances the food options the food. aren't risky food options yeah yeah it's uh, you're over- gonna like it over at Three Broomsticks, it's definitely more of a blend of American appeal and then also throwing in a little bit of that British uh, that British flavor to it with the fish and chips and uh, pies and all that stuff. Yeah, they got the shepherd's pie there. Yeah. yeah. So, But then Leaky Cauldron, they didn't really want to screw around with that mix of American and British. They just went British. full force. And yeah, they went, they went with a strong british menu some of the things you'll find on there include fish and chips uh, bangers and mash toad in the hole the beef lamb and guinness stew uh, other different types of pies including cottage pie fisherman's pie and you know just just a lot it's it is a british only menu so i love that about it too though like it was an immediate draw for me because it again it adds to authenticity like it it pulls me in more you know even more so yeah and there's just some staples like fish and chips you you can get that you know any british themed pub that you go to anywhere you know like you can however i don't go to many british themed pubs i mean in florida you have basically i know if you go over to 192 and you go to some of those dangerous little hangouts and stuff well you know it's different where where there's a knife fight or if you have one of the uh I forget what they're called, but there's a chain of like Clauda restaurants or something in bigger cities. That, but in terms of Florida, if you're looking for this type of affair, you basically have Leaky Cauldron, Three Broomsticks, uh, Finnegan's, and then over at Epcot, you have Rose and Crown. There is a place on I Drive too that's a like it's a um again we're yeah. talking about in theme parks yeah and like, oh I, you oh i'm sorry it's because you said epcot i thought we left after we said no epcot. i'm just saying in general like <laughs> she i talks don't but i drive on the trip guys. yeah but i don't like going to places where you have a better chance of getting rabies and <laughs> so that's why i avoid 192 and i drive of course at as many costs as possible it's nothing against the people that are down there Boy. just rabies you can't come back from that yeah you can't no. <laughs> <That's Elaine Bennis. laughs> okay so <laughs> the food is very heavily british and uh that's that's a good thing in my opinion uh it's authenticity arguable but from some of the uh, brits i've ever spoke to about it they say it's not that bad I anyone else have good people I even, they know i, I, no. I would agree british with person. the brits that you've spoken with what's that i said i would agree with the brits that you've spoken with well having having been to you know the united Kingdom oh yeah myself yeah i mean i've been to plenty of pubs i mean this is like you know you're when you go to like gourmet restaurants and stuff like that you're not going to find this stuff this is you know this is pub, pub food, food or comfort food um it doesn't necessarily have to be in a pub but this is you know this is like traditional comfort food and yeah. and, and it is um you know the I think the quality is a little bit different, but it is uh, in the way that it tastes and it prepare, it's prepared. You know, I think it is authentic. I think it is, from my perspective anyway, I think they do a good job at filling out the menu from uh, with exactly what you'd expect. And uh, I guess I'd probably have to be a native of the United Kingdom to really be able to judge the quality. Um, but it is a, it, it is a wide uh, offering yeah. of those types of foods. Yeah, good point. And I guess I should say, too, for this review, Dustin was not there with us. Uh, no. It ended up being the last thing that we needed to throw together so we could do this before I had to leave for California, which is where I currently am at whenever this is released. Yeah. But we've all eaten there now multiple times Yeah. for different types of meals. So this one is kind of a, a throwaway one for the most part, but still a very important one because in terms of quick service... Uh, it's one it's of the few one. that we can actually 
really recommend at this point. Yeah, like I said, I mean, this is my go-to. If I'm meeting at Universal Studios, it's either in there or The Simpsons. So yeah. It's like, yeah. Agreed. So are we ready to actually start talking about I'm going to get real we hungry. Had? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get let's real hungry. Get, yeah. Well, let's start with beverages because that's the first thing that we started with. And uh, I believe in terms of helping out with pictures and organization for the video version of the show, uh, I have myself, then Rhino, then JL in terms of everything we had, starting with drinks and then food and excellent desserts and all that stuff. So we'll start. With my drink, I ordered one of the new specialty beverages that came out with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley, and I got the Fishy Green Ale. And the Fishy Green Ale, what to say about the Fishy Green Ale? It seems fishy. Well, it's kind of in a way. Uh, The Fishy Green Ale is a mint lime non-alcoholic beverage. Also, definitely a bit of watered downness to it. Uh, If they put any sugar in it, I would say it's an artificial kind because it leaves me with that same taste that I have whenever I drink a Diet Coke or that that weird diet flavor, which sometimes I'm okay with. In this case, I am because one of the other aspects of the drink, it is it has boba balls down at the bottom. Or, boba ta- or balls. tapioca ones. Boba balls. Tapioca. Yeah, and I mean, of course, whenever the balls come up through the straw, <laughs> and <laughs> well, just for for parents out there, close your kids' ears right now. They probably shouldn't be listening to this. <laughs> but whenever the balls then burst in your mouth and give you that that juicy talk dirty crazy. to it. <laughs> It's, it helps balance out that diety taste that the drink has. Um, I, I remember having this on the the media event, and it disgusted me. So I wanted to I wanted to try it again after a, a year of not having it. I've, and when your expectations you were disgusting. set, yeah, yeah, I gotta say I actually enjoyed it this time around. I, He's acquired the, the taste. The four specialty drinks uh, are fishy green ale, the peach tree fizzing tea. The tongue tying lemon squash and then the otter's fizzy orange, which we're going to get Rhino's opinion on in just a second from now. Those are the four new drinks along with the fishy green ale. And I would definitely would not recommend fishy green ale first out of any of those. It's still my least favorite one of them. But it's if you really want to try it, go ahead. It's worth a shot. It's something unique. It's something different i don't really I guess the... know it, like it's kind of out of left field to me i wish it was frozen like i because when i get a boba tea like i like it to be like the slush one so <sighs> i just i'm waiting for them to make this like a slush version. and i'm assuming that the, the tapioca balls at the bottom are supposed to represent caviar or something along fish those eggs. Lines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fish eggs okay yes. fishy green ale I've never been a fan of the boba stuff i like it whenever they burst in my mouth nope. so rhino i believe you did have the otter's fizzy Speaking orange of, juice huh um yeah, I did. This is my favorite um, drink over there, I think. You know, but a beer aside, obviously, gang. Um, but uh, this is like, um, it's, uh, do you have the description or like, am I just reading? It, it's it? basically fizzy orange juice. But the best part is they do a little cinnamon sugar. Um, Rim. Like, yeah. I want to say I, there's, I want to say that's honey or something like that. I don't know what they get the cinnamon sugar on there with, but it's really, it's really good. It's very refreshing. Like it, it's, it's a nice flavor that you wouldn't think cinnamon and orange juice. I was kind of like, Ugh, what, what's you want to say it's honey or could it be caramel? Like I know they do with some pumpkin beers. It, okay. I want to say that that that's probably what it is. It's probably caramel. caramel. Yeah. Because that, it, it definitely gave me that same idea. Like they do it on, um, uh, like a shipyard pumpkin yeah. or something like that. Like, and I love that. I, I think that's just a nice little flavor, like a nice little hint of a flavor in a yeah. drink there. And and this one, I, I've got to say, is one of my favorites. It's not overly powering strong or anything like that. It, it's it's light, refreshing, and I like the fizz. Yeah, yeah that's what I have to say about that. And then, JL, you went old school style, and yep. you got frozen butter beer. Old school it was. It was a hot day. I was sweating a lot, and I like slushy drinks, so I got the old school frozen butter beer. Still as good as it has always been. Yeah, I mean you can't go wrong with the butter beer. You mm-hmm. have the choice of frozen or cold or and now warm. Now you can get it hot in the colder months. Yeah, well, you can. I think they're doing it all year round. Oh, because but I wouldn't. It'd be a little that. weird having it. Yeah, you they were still want that. they were still serving it while we were there, and it's oh that would I feel like that would be a mistake for someone to order it 
at this time of the year. But oh, it's good. It's I love it though. The hot butter beer. I some people it's not for them, uh, but I had it on like our last cold day that we had. Here. Yeah, it's awesome on cold days. Some people don't like drinking coffee, so if they still want that like morning wake up and they don't drink coffee or tea, they'll drink hot chocolate. That, that so would I would understand one, yeah. it from that aspect. They like their warm beverage to help them wake up. It loosens the throat. Yes, like Folgers in your cup. Folgers. Is that, is that their catch line? It loosens yes. the throat, Folgers in your cup. <laughs> Folgers, hey, not a sponsor of the dis, but. <laughs> damn fine cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so then also before, well, technically we would want it as an appetizer, not an entree, but we also, along with our food, decided to do a side order of the scotch egg Mm -hmm. Uh, for those of you out there who don't know what a scotch egg is it is basically a hard-boiled egg wrapped in sausage and then deep fried in this context too i've had it where it's just been the sausage deep fried and it'll come out with this this is also then breaded and then deep fried and it was served with a nice uh spicy brown mustard dressing and then radishy or something yeah Yeah, there was a there was definitely a good amount of spice to it it was intense and then that weird beet or cranberry we still don't know what the heck it is i i I thought i i thought it was cranberry the first time i had it i thought it was cranberry because i remember really enjoying it but then i had it this time and i i couldn't really get a flavor from it so you said beets and that's what i was thinking my question when you're when you're deciding between beets and cranberry is it delicious or is it beets (laughs) yeah i hate beets it's my least favorite i don't mind beets it definitely had a tartness to it that would still lead me to think that there was some type of cranberryness in it but either way, it was a nice little garnish. It was. It was. Yeah. It, it, for that being just like we, and we should preface this too, saying that I, you didn't know because it's not listed anywhere. But I told Craig that you could get a side of a Scotch egg. Like they don't. They don't have that. Somebody had told me that once. One of the um, the uh, witches there had told me that, yep. and it's great because like it. it if you're if that's not the meal you want that scotch egg meal you can still try that because that thing looks really good in the display window so not on the menu but available upon request exactly you can get the scotch egg in the plowman's platter which also has three kinds of cheeses some fresh bread uh, pickles chutney bunch of other crap all put together on a platter uh scotch eggs they are one of my favorite unhealthy foods oh yeah they're so good uh you can't go wrong with eggs sausage and deep frying anything and they did it well here it yeah i good. would absolutely did especially for that side i mean it's one of them cut yeah. in half but we shared it between three people just mm-hmm. so we could have a little taste yeah it was only three dollars so oh okay not yeah. not bad at all a nice little nice little snack i would actually go in and just order like just, two of them yeah, and I was say. but heads up that sauce is really really intense i actually preferred to just have the egg without the sauce because that the sauce was so spicy to me. It, that was too much of a. I kick, loved that sauce. Kick for me. I, I yep. even when we get to my food, I'm going to talk about that sauce again. And we will get to your food very shortly. But before we get to your food, we're going to get to my food first. And I had one of their signature dishes. Well, whenever you have one small menu, they're all signature dishes. <laughs> but I had the beef lamb and Guinness stew, which is well, it's a mixture of beef and lamb. And it's in a like Guinness gravy stew type mix served inside of a uh, of a bread a bowl. bread bowl. What is this Panera? I, I did not taste that, but I thought that you had the winner of the group. I mean, your your meal looked incredible. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I had I, food jealousy looking at what you were eating. I know I keep harking back onto the times I've been there before, but that's also important to this review to see how it's come along since it's been open. Harkened, harken, harping, harping. It was a P. Harping, harping. Harp, harping means I'm remembering old times. I'm okay. harping back. Okay, well. I think that's harkening back. Not, har- not harping. Jack when you harp on pull something. Up, pull up, let's pull up the dictionary, guys. Let's <laughs> guys, I don't care. Um, <laughs> Hold on. I'm talking, no, I'm talking about the food. I got, I'm, I got bangers on my mind. Siri. Hold on. Help you He's got a boy, Siri. What is the definition of harpening? Harpening is not a word. <laughs> it's going to give you a sassy answer. Let's see. That's just harpooning. Two definitions of harpooning. Yeah. <laughs> a spear with a shaft and barb point for throwing. Used for catching large fish or whales. Or your memories. Is attached to <laughs> what is the definition of harkening? Hmm. 
Let me think. The definition of hearkening is, listen, used mostly in the imperative. Huh. So like, hark the herald angels sing. We, we, yeah, we, oh. we still... Don't know. We still don't know, so I'm <laughs> just not going to use it I anymore. know. I know. You guys don't know. Harp, when you harp back, that means you're reminiscing or you're talking about things that has a P in it. I well, come from a simple upbringing. Yeah. I don't need these $10 words. Siri's <laughs> confused, so... I'm going. I'm looking back at my past experiences at <laughs> at Leaky Cauldron to really do this. the the last The first and last time I actually ate the beef lamb in Guinness stew, uh, it was served buffet style because it was during a media event and I was not impressed with it. And that's why I haven't gotten it since. And then I I went for it just because it seemed like it seemed like it's what I wanted. And oh yeah, it was what I wanted. Uh, I mean, you could taste all those flavors coming from the beef and lamb, and they're just so succulent, fell apart in your mouth. Wonderful combination. Oh, excellent combination. And there was a little bit of fat on the beef, but I can look past that because it's it's stew beef. You're going to expect it to be fatty. And it had little bits of carrots and potatoes in there that just added that nice little crunch. Uh, Served with a side salad. And a tomato in your choice of either blue cheese, ranch, or Italian dressing. Uh, I, if I could give one bit of advice to Universal, I would say get rid of the salad that comes with it. Make it a bigger bowl and more stew, and you've got an absolute winner. This is, that would be the one thing I would eat every time from it looks now hearty. on. Hearty. It looks it looks like something you'll get. And well, now you're saying you you'd say make the portion a little bit larger. But even looking yeah. at that, I was thinking like that's. That's good. That's well, going to fill you up. You're not going to feel like I ate this and like, oh, I got the wrong thing. I didn't feel like I was full after eating it until I started eating like the the puff pastry bread. Then I started to get really okay. full. So that's why I didn't finish it all just because it was starting to get to be too much. Yeah. But if you eat the bread and the stew itself with your salad, you will definitely be full. It's a lot of food right there. Uh, so I would highly recommend the beef, lamb, and Guinness stew. Uh, Rhino, you had the toad in the hole yeah this this is the first time i had this there too because i i've been trying to every time i go to get something different um i usually harpen harken back to whatever i my favorite but um i liked the meal it would you okay yeah there's the picture um it's it's basically two of their banger sausages like baked into a pastry um, and then that comes with um, like a side of veggies and all served atop some peas, with, like one of those tomato situations and uh, tomato situations. I, I want to say, <laughs> I want like a really bad like Matt Damon film. <laughs> <laughs> tomato situations coming this fall. Um, I want to say it's on top of um, caramelized onions. Yeah, or is that sauerkraut? I think that's sauerkraut. I didn't eat it. So. I have a really bad, um, not a bad palate, but I sometimes have. No, it's a, a it, it's it's something stuff. different. It's not caramelized onions. It's it's uh, some British thing that comes with okay, a I bunch was... of different. I can't remember what it's called, but it comes with like bangers and mash and stuff like okay, that. Okay, yeah. I usually push it to the side because it kind of has a sour uh, flavor to it. Yeah. So it is probably some type of sauerkraut type cabbage. It is a cabbage. Okay. Okay. Cool. So so now I'm not off. Like I I couldn't distinguish what it was but um but overall i thought it was really good um but for me i like stuff with um like i like spicy stuff so i what i found myself doing is like um i would cut a piece because it's just the banger in the pastry so there's nothing it, it seemed a little weird to me you know if you were in america that thing would be stuffed full of cheese or you know something else incredibly unhealthy um yeah but you know so i would take a piece and then dip it in the sauce that came with a scotch egg and like that it was amazing yeah. and um so i think like if they just added a little like a little scoop of that on the side that dish would be a home run for me i mean that's a good point and i'm sure you could even ask for it and uh it, it was it filling though because it's also the cheapest thing you can order on the menu and that comes in at 8.99 uh yeah i i didn't actually now that you're saying that i don't i didn't really think of it as any like like i was getting less than you guys um or any of the other things i've eaten there before um because it's still two two of the sausage links yeah. two bangers and the bread so i i equivalent like it was probably the same sorry that was a terrible word but um it was probably the equivalent of the the banger sub i would think just maybe a little less bread but i found it filling i really to be honest like i really liked the veggies on the side i think i had a potato that wasn't cooked all the way through it Ooh, tasted like crunchy. a carrot 
French yeah. potato. Ugh. But but I'll you know that was it was just that one and and whatever. But I don't know. I this is another thing I really enjoy about this restaurant. I love that vegetables are the side. Like I yeah. you know I love that there are dishes that come with that stuff. So it it was a meal that I felt like it it. it it didn't weigh me down yeah. when I was still gonna about to go back into the theme park. So. Not completely unhealthy. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. But then we have JL, who, as Pete will often describe, is the worst vegetarian ever. <laughs> well, JL decided to order basically the most unhealthiest dish Immediate. that they offer. And that, of course, is the banger style sandwich. Yes. Uh, served with wedge fries. Yes. Okay. So here's the thing. First of all, I'm not... A vegetarian i just have vegetarian tendencies vegan tendencies where i like to i prefer to eat that way but i do not eat that way 100 percent of the time um i went into the leaky cauldron their um vegan option was split pea soup and salad and there was no way in the world i was going to even attempt that i hardly can hardly stomach split pea soup <gasps> homemade out of the kitchen you know that's grandma my makes favorite it. soup well, i hate soups okay. that's the only one i'll eat <laughs> oh well you should have gotten the split pea soup but i don't i i just i'm not a split pea soup person and there was no way in the world i was even gonna think about trying theme park split pea soup so um banger sandwich it was and that was a you know sausage this is what they call them in the uk i guess yes. they call them bangers and um came with <laughs> sausage in the mouth that's what they call them here in the u.s oh dear there's a rest and development reference I'm i sorry. am aware <laughs> I hate it. okay so then it had a sauerkraut on it and it was drizzled with this spicy mustard is it thing the s- same it. stuff no. that was no. in the scotch egg it's a different no it spicy. was it was different and then it had a, a tomato thrown in there and yeah. Um, I love those damn tomatoes. It seemed to it be like a, a ground mustard. Yes. Like it came from the ground? Well, no. You know, the kind that are hand ground, so they have a little bit more texture, a little bit of spice to them? Yeah. It was okay. It was in the Dijon mustard family. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, anyway, it was good. There was lots of it. It was a large size sandwich. And, um, and one tomato. And one tomato. So, here's the thing. I was... Sometimes I like tomatoes, sometimes I don't. I thought that the tomato in the sandwich was actually a good choice because there was a lot of flavor and a bit of a kick to this sandwich, and I felt like the tomato balanced that out a bit. So, um, yeah, I, the the bread was great. It was fresh. Good. I appreciated it. And I really liked the, um, the wedge potato fry things as well because they tasted less like fries and more like potatoes. They look good. They were pretty good those were the first things to leave my plate i think that's my other favorite um that was my that's usually like my kind of go-to thing there uh, it, my go-to thing is actually just the bangers and mash yes you can't bangers on potatoes gravy uh, it's so good so simple so yeah. delicious and i mean the pies that's not putting anything past on the cottage and the fishermen's i haven't had that yet so both excellent i mean uh so did you put any ketchup by any chance on your your wedge style fries i, I um the correct I, answer yes, is you I did. did. I did. And I did put ketchup on my wedge fries. The only reason yeah, I bring that up is too. because I wanted to talk about the other options you have for uh, sitting down at the table. So you do have an array of condiments that you can use, uh, including ketchup, mustard, a little bit of the uh, HP steak sauce that they Harry have. Potter. It's HP sauce. HP sauce. Uh, malt vinegar, and then that's also where you'll find your napkins, your salt, your pepper, and then your plastic utensils for your meal. So for people who hate eating, I don't want to say fancier, but a little bit more up-class things with plastic utensils, I feel bad. Right. Because like eating, uh, anytime I'm eating the bangers and mash, you do kind of feel weird using the plastic utensils, getting c- break trying em. to cut through that sausage. You it's did, a bit difficult. like, you cut something. And I was cutting like, my bread. Your, okay. Well, I was going to say the fork's dirty because that's my issue. Sometimes you go places and it's like a terrible, like the the second you go, uh, and it, everything breaks yeah. apart. But yeah, I, maybe the knives are you, a little flimsy. You don't want fork shards all in your <laughs> food. You know? They're definitely not unhefty. They're hefty. They're going to they're gonna cut through stuff, but it's a little bit of a struggle to get there. And uh, one thing that is never really that much of a struggle to eat is the best for last, and that, of course, dessert. is dessert. So we didn't necessarily 
order individual desserts because that's just not how we roll on Mm-mm. our crew. Uh, we want it all, yo. Yeah, you know, whenever you're dropping down <laughs> Mad Skrilla for... What up? It's, it's got to get brought up every time now. When you're dropping Mad Skrilla on these meals, you, you got to share the sweet stuff in the end. And we chose one of each dessert. Why not? Uh, and the first one we had, well... We kind of had them at different Wait, times. The first real, one, before, you talk, before you talk what? about them specifically, I want to say this. So we ordered all of our stuff. You go up into the restaurant. You go up to your witch, and oh, you order ev- all your food at once. Oh, the drinks yes. and everything. They give you the drinks. They give you the candlestick. You give the candlestick to another witch, and she... Or wizard. Or wizard. We're I don't, not, yeah, we're not saying only here. women need to do one job. Yeah. Um, uh, and they take the candle. They give you a seat. Then they bring the stuff over to you. They bring everything at once, so... If you we had our food, which, you yeah. know, from the looks of it, it's not, we're not eating a light meal here. No. But one of the food had ice cream scooped on top of it. And since it's a warm treat, by the time we got to eat it, there was very little and ice cream left on it. That's that, my only complaint. That dessert was the sticky toffee pudding. Oh, sweet so Jesus. It's a it nice so bread pudding uh, with caramel and vanilla ice cream all just yeah, there's thrown on top. I mean, caramel in there, yeah. it looks good. It was amazing. This dessert is sex. <laughs> uh, and we had it as a group <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the <laughs> in terms of desserts oh. at Diagon Alley itself uh, I mean you have Florian Fortescue's ice cream which the best so ice cream. amazing but in terms of desserts at Leaky Cauldron they have not come up with enough magnificent marvelous words to describe this dessert yet it just you you know you break it apart as long as you get a nice big whip of caramel on there and you get that ice cream which i actually prefer it being a little melted not to the point no, that it melted like, when we, we got like, you don't want yeah, ice cream soup like a, though like a yeah. little like a tiny little dollop by the time we got to it i love yeah. my ice cream that's all i'm saying but my god this dessert it was it was amazing yeah someone should by win by far the best award. one yeah it, it just it was wonderful yeah Mm. I don't really. I I can't. I can't. We can't even talk about it too much more because <laughs> no, if I'm someone wanted angry, to, we don't have it right now. If someone wanted to come up and just pour caramel in my mouth, I'd probably be okay with that until you know obesity and death. But before then, <laughs> I would be just fine with it. Uh, another dessert, which I think is number two, and on some days it might even be my number one dessert there, and that's the chocolate potted cream. Uh, which don't get too excited. It comes in a nice little mason jar, but it's essentially chocolate pudding with a little bit of uh, black cherry sauce around. It's so yeah, cute. like a mix in. Like a, I'm not a giant chocolate person myself. Like I, I, I that it, was, good because then you'd have to go to the doctor for giant chocolate disease. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was weird. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a giant person made out of chocolate. What's that book where the kid used to touch everybody and they'd become chocolate? Keep anyway, going. regardless, that's what, that'll be in the show notes page. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I it, so it wasn't it. I didn't dislike it. Like I liked the black cherry flavor in it, but it wouldn't be like I would never probably have picked that one. I, I mean, very I'm, simple. When I'm having my chocolate days, where I really want chocolate, uh, one of the things I go to at home is chocolate pudding. I'm a pudding guy. I Except for th- this isn't just chocolate though. There definitely is a very distinct cherry flavor yeah. to it. Cherry chocolate. Which that's still good in my book. Well, oh, it yeah, is, yeah. but that's I'm saying you need to it. set your expectations for that cuz if you're getting ready to take a bite of what you think is just chocolate, you're going to be a little bit surprised cuz there's a bit of tart yeah. in there. Good point. Uh and the final dessert that you can try and I know all of our favorites in our hearts, uh the Kranachan or the Kranachan. The Cronache? How do we... The Cronache? Is it this thing? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the last one. So, uh, it, essentially... Uh-huh. I don't... I don't know how to pronounce it. They, I mean, that's why we literally... It's a Cronache. That's why we literally ordered one of each dessert. Mm-hmm. Dessert. Dessert. Um, My son is also named Desort. You know, I'm going to let someone else take the lead on this one because okay. apparently I can't talk This right was now. like just... Like, it's like a parfait, I would say. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, my thing is, is it, like, it's raspberry whipped cream. I don't think there was cake in it. Angel food cake, maybe. I, I might be making that up. It was a little tart for my taste. And I love tart things. Like, I love lemon flavored things and everything. But it, it tasted a little artificially tart for me. That's all. And I believe it's throat. their sugar-free dessert, if I can remember. Oh, from God, what, I didn't write it down in my notes. 
It didn't taste like it was sugar free. Well, it no sugar added. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. I always screw those up. I yeah. mean, it's it's only the natural sugar. Well, you yeah. screw those up, you're going to kill somebody. Well, <laughs> then they deserve to die. Because <laughs> they trusted decrease, you. Decrease the surplus population. <laughs> All right, gang. Of the what a weird show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was our epic meal journey through Leaky Cauldron. And I mean, if it didn't come off that way, I think we all absolutely recommend Leaky Cauldron in terms oh, of the yeah. quality yeah. of the food. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys certainly seem to enjoy them in these pictures. Here. Well, yeah. So I, th- I think let's look at my picture of, and these will be in our show notes, but I would say that looks like satisfaction. There's Craig sucking back on his boba teas. If you (laughs) think he looks good there, wait till you see him eating the dessert. Yeah. Which I did not put in there. But then again, (laughs) Rhino, I feel like he... He was a little over excited about what he was getting himself into. I mean, he just kind of looked goofy. And I'm about to shovel that food down my gullet. Yeah. I'm real excited about Please it. Please right tell there. me that you are not going to show any pictures of me. Well, we're going to show a picture, but none of the uh, none of the none of the, the offensive ones. pictures that aren't good. The so. NC17. Oh, yeah. that's there we go. not There's really the any better. I Let's didn't have time to blur out the uh, the images to make it a little more age appropriate for some of our fans <laughs> out there. Overall, if you can't tell from the pictures, though, which if you're listening, go look at them on the show notes. It's unplugged.com. Find Universal and. Uh, the blue universal edition one. And that's where you're going to find out more information from the show. And some of these pictures of the things we're talking about, we all absolutely enjoyed it. And the food is excellent. The price range, uh, goes from about eight ninety nine to the fisherman's pie is fourteen ninety nine. The most expensive thing is the plowman's platter. And that's at nineteen ninety nine. That's a, that's a shareable, but that's thing, a shareable right? thing. So you're going to want to do that. Uh, the desserts range from four forty nine to six ninety nine, And drinks are anywhere from really $4 to $6. So, uh, and you can also, I forgot to completely mention, you can also get alcoholic beverages there. The the two specialty brews in Diagon Alley are available there. Um, and it's just, it's got it's got everything for everyone. Um, it's really a great experience, yeah. guys. And it, we got to say, uh, in terms of just beyond the food, because that's not the only thing to look at in a dining review, but also the team members inside, the service. Everyone was nice and friendly, extremely mm-hmm. polite. Oh yeah, they were very they were very themed too. We she they wasn't were, their thing. Oh yeah, we were yes. taking the pictures and she was like, "What are those?" Yeah, very much in character. We we had our theming experience where I went toe to toe with with our witch to to theme a little bit about my my we cell phone no taking camera. off the street of London, son. Yeah, we're not everyday people at Universal. She mm-hmm. tried to get us, but she didn't. Uh, <laughs> but no, overall, everyone was great there. And uh, in terms of cleanliness of the restaurant, uh, I think you kind of brought up a good point about the forks and stuff too. Not in that, uh, not in that so much that the forks weren't durable or whatever. But whenever you have those communal trays like yeah. that where people pull it off i never really thought about the cleanliness factor of that that you know some people might go in and start getting their grubby little mitts on <laughs> on your silverware and it might be a little gross i know i'm looking at jl she's kind of our resident is this gross or isn't it gross i thought you were just as gonna far say as that other people sorry can i be... wasn't listening to you oh <laughs> Oh, I, that's I, called I'm karma. a little OCD about silverware, and I would say that I've never really given it a second thought there. Okay, there's nothing in that restaurant that makes me think like I'm not okay just grabbing yeah. it there. Then never mind. Oh, overall, it was it was relatively clean. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, I I had thought about saying this earlier, and then I didn't. When I was talking about it, be, having a, a feel of being really really old, along with that comes a look of being grungy. But at the same time, there's nothing grungy and dirty about this restaurant. Yeah, we saw right. we saw a team member literally sweeping and cleaning up the entire time mm-hmm. we were there. Yes. She just kept going and going and going yes. like an Energizer bunny. I think somebody bust our table. No, they, I was too afraid to leave the stuff. Yeah, they will bust your table. Feel free to leave your food behind. Be fined. Jeez. <laughs> behind. Uh, but we did get up and bust our own table just because, you know, I have arms and legs and feet. I can easily do that myself. So if, if you are capable of doing it, then I always, always recommend talk. I it. Like to do You're it. just making it easier for other people that have to work long, hard days mm-hmm. and sometimes put up with a lot of crap. Um, 
and then environment in general you're in the wizarding world of harry potter can't beat that place uh it could get very noisy in there whenever it's extremely busy yes i would say that because if it's so big and open and those ceilings i the acoustics of it i would think that there would be a lot of echoing going on when the when the volume gets raised in there and if you don't want to eat there for a lunch dinner time like we did too they do offer breakfast there as well which is a bit on the overpriced side i would say all their entrees are 15.99 i think it's just regular stuff too it's not it's nothing exciting uh yeah it's it's not great honestly i've eaten breakfast there multiple times now and i would just say it's average but we're not doing a review on the breakfast i just wanted to mention that they did have it maybe we'll do it one day and they also do have a kids menu if your kids aren't that adventurous and it's a good place where they can get macaroni and cheese fish and chips Hmm. so uh, leaky cauldron it's got something for everyone uh i think we all give it a highly recommended or at least say recommended oh no i'm going high 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 way up top i'm top floor yeah best best quick, quick service, service I, there. you yeah. can get at universal and maybe even the best quick service you can get in orlando in a theme park Ooh, maybe that's maybe. a head-to-head coming i don't know also i, I, I want to say claim. real quick um yes. the book i was talking about was called the chocolate touch by patrick skeen catling good i'm glad that we <laughs> okay. could get that out there i had to look it up it was bothering me so that is our review of leaky cauldron at the wizarding world of potter Diagon Alley inside universal studios florida so before we go just want to wrap up with a little bit of those uh kind of send outs to what you need to be doing in the meantime so you just listen to this episode if you haven't uh subscribed to us on itunes yet go ahead and subscribe to us on itunes review us on itunes give us a number say bad things about us we don't care if you say bad things we're only going to get better do the same thing on youtube hit that thumbs up if you like it if you don't like it hit that thumbs down uh and if you hit the thumbs down one day youtube's going to reveal what you're actually doing with that and then we're going to come and mock you so (laughs) keep that in mind as well always feel free to send us an email it is uopodcast at disunplugged.com and you're going to find that and all of our other emails (coughs) and any information you could ever want at disunplugged.com that's where you find our show notes as i've talked about throughout this show just look for the blue universal one and you can also get to the contact page through disunplugged.com at slash contact and that's where you'll be able to send us more emails or leave a voicemail which don't know if we've we've gotten any recently i guess i just realized that i don't have access to those if anyone ever leaves them so <laughs> if you've been sending it and you're just pulling your hair out like why in the hell isn't he and he he's just ignoring my voicemail he hates me because i currently don't have access so i might have dustin do a little digging to find out if it wants to ever come doesn't in listen to anybody. I can just give you the password or he can just give me the password that would also work out um yeah and just you know if you like what we're doing give us that awesome feedback because well that's the only way we can improve or get worse i guess is knowing our flaws strengths weaknesses but at the end of the day we appreciate everything and everyone out there who actually is giving us a chance and watching listening blah 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 this that and the other that's going to do it for that ding in this current episode but (laughs) ding but just in general, that's going to also do it for this episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. We will be back next week with another episode, but until then, take care, goodbye, see you later, this, that, all that crap, watch us later, or listen, whatever. Whatever.